Shalom, giving all praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rakakradash, and double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. I'm sure by now many of you brothers might have caught wind of the conversation that occurred on Just Pearly Things, where she mentioned slavery wasn't that bad, right? But what we have to understand when we come across these videos and these clippings is scripture coming to life, right? Psalms chapter 68 verse 8 and it reads so they shall make their own tongues fall upon themselves see what you have to understand about the house of Edom is they are so prideful and so lawful lofty minded pardon me is that they think they can say what they want when they, when they want and they, they don't care less who's offended by it but you have to understand that that's the spirit that is in them okay and also to the house of Israel, to our people. They, they are mocking you just as the scriptures said they would. Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 4. I'm going to read the back portion of this precept. And it reads, Therefore I have made thee a reproach unto the heathen, which they are, and a mocking to all countries. Okay? You have to understand this is scripture being fulfilled. And of course, on YouTube, under the Fair Use Act, I'm not making any money off of this, but I'm going to use these clips for educational purposes. Listen closely to what they have to say. Watch their interaction, brothers. Let's get into it. Oh. What do you mean, basically? Well, yeah, I mean, because of but, course, you know, we're getting into the details of it, but yeah, that's that's the that's the gist. Yeah, I mean, it, but you kind of deny it happened. All right. So they're talking about slavery. They're talking about uh, uh, um, what went on during that time period, etc. Right? Let me start over, brother. Sorry for the interruption. Just watch closely. Oh. What do you mean, basically? Well, yeah, I mean, because uh, of but, course, you know, we're getting into the details of it, but yeah, that's that's the that's the gist. Yeah, I mean, it, but you kind of deny it happened. Yeah, I deny you, some of the you, parts of you it. You deny parts of it don't seem realistic to you. You right. think they're embellished upon. I think they're embellished, yeah. The same way. This sounds... Oh, gosh. Oh, boy. Ah, they're going to be in trouble. This handled. sounds this sounds similar to the slavery stuff, too. This sounds similar to the slavery stuff, too. Bitch, what? All right, so let's pause right there, right? If you notice how she laughed, you notice how she was ready to, to burst with laughter. You see the, 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 the sleazy scoffing look on her face again it's all scriptures coming to pass but those of us who've been in been in the knowledge for any substantial amount of time some of the basics that we learn is number one the bible is about israelites and for israelites number two slavery was a huge part of our punishment right that the lord proclaimed against us in deuteronomy 28 right but something i want to make sure that i express in this particular lesson is deuteronomy 28 and 68 where it outlines that, hey, we will be taken into captivity in slave ships, right? But we don't, need, we don't necessarily need Deuteronomy 28. It's sprawled all throughout the scriptures, but that's just one anchor scripture. Another scripture I want to make sure I point out when they talk about slavery not being that bad, right? Deuteronomy 28 and 32, something that we have to understand, not only were we slavery was part of our punishment but also doing slavery our sons and our daughters would be taken from us and slow slow pardon me sold into or to other plantations other parts of the world Deuteronomy 28 and 32 your sons and your daughters will be given to another nation while your eyes grow weary looking for them day after day with no power in your hands you understand let me speed this interview up a bit because there's another portion I want you brothers to hear. And ironically, hold on one second, brothers. Hopefully I won't pass it. There we go, right there. This particular video, um, those of us in the knowledge and the truth, we see that number there, 144 often. Of course, that's a spiritual number, but you have to pay attention to these things, brother. So that's a, that's a mini blessing, if you will, you know, because we all hope the more that we grow in this knowledge and this truth, we are being sealed with this information, becoming one of the elect. But nevertheless, let's get let's pick right back up where we left off. Listen closely. Oh yeah. And I'm not trying to say it wasn't horrible. It was. Right. But they want to make it like more horrible. But they want to make it like more horrible. <laughs> All right. 
So I wanted to pause it there because she said they want to make it more horrible. Brief fact here, right? It reads, the punishment took many forms. And this is referring to the punishment of slaves, the punishment of our people, right? We live in an information age. Everything is at your fingertips, right? We'll start over. The punishment took many forms, including whippings, torture, mutilation, imprisonment, and being sold away from the plantation. Slaves were even sometimes murdered. Some masters were more benevolent than others and punished less often for, for severely or severely. Pardon me. Let me come down here. And it reads, what was the cruelty of slavery? Slavery was very cruel to most black slaves, especially the field slaves. Slaves were beaten, whipped, castrated, branded, pierced, had limbs amputated. And trust me, you have to understand, you know, depending upon your, your offense, your arm, your leg, your ear, you know, your foot, your toes were chopped off immediately and killed in various ways. Listen to what happened to our women. Slaves, women were often sexually abused by white masters, their sons and overseers. Okay, so everyone that bad. And let's get back into the scriptures here. Okay. This is all prophesied, brothers, because this is part of our punishment for going against the Lord, our power. Right. Let's listen to, listen to what the prophet Daniel had to say. Daniel chapter nine, verse seven. Lord, you are righteous because all his judgments are righteous, whether we like them or not. That's the realization I had to come into as well. But this day we are covered with shame. The people of Judah and the inhabitants of Jerusalem and all of Israel, all 12 tribes, both near and far, in all the countries where you have scattered us because of our unfaithfulness to you. Daniel chapter 9 verse 12. Remember she said it wasn't that bad. Well, what does the scripture say? You have fulfilled the words spoken against us and against our rulers by bringing on us great disaster under the whole heaven. Listen closely. Under the whole heaven. I mean the whole earth. Nothing has ever been done like what has been done unto Jerusalem. Let's look at the New Living Translation. And it reads, never has there been such a disaster as happened in Jerusalem. I mean, it's uncomparable. You can't compare it to anything. This stupid broad said that it wasn't that bad. Okay? Let's read how bad our judgment really was. Lamentations chapter 4 verse 6. And if you wonder why I'm going from verse to verse, the scriptures say this is how you break it down. Precept must be upon precept. Line upon line here a little, there a little. Okay? Then the Holy Spirit has to be working with you to open up your understanding as well. Lamentations chapter 4 verse 6. The punishment of my people is greater than that of Sodom, which was overthrown in a moment without a hand turned to help her. What you have to understand there is that Sodom and Gomorrah and the surrounding cities were destroyed in a moment. OK, but the punishment that we endure even to this day is worse because we've been enduring it year after year and for centuries, for decades upon decades. Right. They had that moment, that moment of judgment, that punishment immediately, right? But we still have to bear it because this we, we have to bear the indignation of the Lord even to this day, okay? The modern day plantation is our jobs. We go from there. Amos. Amos chapter 2 verse 6. This is what the Lord says. For three sins of Israel and for four, I will not relent. They sell the innocent for what? Silver. And the needy for a pair of sandals. You have to understand this. Our ancestors, our family members were sold for silver, for money, and for a pair of damn sandals. Let's go from there. Slavery wasn't that bad. Let's see what else they have to say. Right? Let's see what the prophet Isaiah said. We know what the prophet Amos said. What did Isaiah say? In chapter 20, verse 4. So the king of Assyria led away stripped and barefooted. The Egyptian captives and the Cushite exiles, and young and old with the buttocks bare to Egypt's shame. This is a dark saying here. Okay? What Isaiah is saying to you, the reader, is that the Israelites that came from Egypt, that came from Cushite,
They were exiles, okay? He's not talking about actual Egyptians or actual Cushites, all right? Because remember, we were scattered into these lands as well. And what this precept is explaining here, we were led away, we were led away naked. How do we know? Let's come out of this, brothers. Let's get, let's get further points, further snippets to prove our point here. Let me go back into my history, right? And again, YouTube, this is under the, you, this is utilized under the Fair Use Act. And I hope that when I play this, it does not play. Hold on, let me do this, brother. I'm going to pause this. Bear with me. All right, I'm back. Again, YouTube, under the Fair Use Act, I'm going to play this for edification purposes. And as you can read in the subtitle here, it, re it states the subculture of slavery, right? Look at this statue here. It ties right in to the precept I just read. They were led away with the buttocks exposed. What do you see here? What do you see here in these, these Israelite slaves here? Let's listen to what this historian has to say. This is searingly powerful. Yeah. We wanted to literally make the connection to Africa because that's where the story of the black experience in America begins. Like just the experience of being captured, chained, yeah imprisoned separated separated from your loved ones separated from yeah. your loved ones taken away that's why we are so insistent on having a slavery sculpture at this site because if you do not understand uh, the way in which this narrative of racial difference this ideology of white supremacy was created to justify this if you're a normal decent human being and you see people like this mm -hmm. being treated in this way how do you justify that well you say that these people are not really people. They're not really people. Yeah. They're three-fifths human. And that idea, which was shaped for over two and a half centuries, is critical to understanding then what happens after emancipation. These folks were promised freedom after emancipation, and what they got instead was terror, trauma, lynching. And then they were promised security, and what they got after that was segregation and apartheid and humiliation. Uh, and then we were promised equality, and we're still struggling to see that equality made manifest. So, as we continue to prove our point, segregation, humility, right? Lynching, right? Let's go from there. Nahum, chapter 3, verse 10, right? This talks about the nation of Israel. Yet she, all 12 tribes, was taken captive into exile. Her infants were dashed to pieces at every street corner. Lots were cast for her noble. That means our most astute men, our elders, our priests, stately men. We'll start over again. Lots were cast for her nobles. And all her great men were put in chains. Let me come out of this. Let me go back to, let me go back to this, brothers. And I think they might play another video. Hold on, brothers. Let me pause this real quick. I'm trying to keep those commercials out of this lesson. Just give me a second, brothers. All right. So remember, the scripture says her nobles were cast into chains, even the great men. Let's jump right into this clip here. All right. So these chains that I'm picking up, these are 400 years old from Ghana. Hand restraints, neck restraints. pounds oh man that's just crazy you know and I'm, I'm holding these for the second time and my heart is still beating out of my chest it's like it is is I don't know, there's a connection that when you pick them up, it's you feel every bit of the anxiety that your ancestor felt when they were put on him or her. And they didn't, they didn't know what these chains were, where they were going, why they were being put on. Um, what's, what's the name of the podcast? Straight from 
it's gunshot straight from the hip. Okay. And as was stated, as you heard him say, those were the chains that were put on your ancestors, on our people, on our children, on our mothers and our fathers. You understand? Furthermore, how do we know? How do we know? Let me come out of it. Let me go back a verse. Let me go back a verse. Um, well, that's not what I wanted. This is what I wanted. This is exactly what I wanted. Joel chapter 3, verse 3. They cast lot for my people and trade boys for a prostitute. So let's pause there for a second. What it simply means to cast lot mean they roll dice. So you roll dice for slaves, for, for slave Israelite boys, only to turn around and trade them for a prostitute. But, but, but slavery wasn't that bad? But slavery was embellished? Come on. We know the scriptures tell us every word of Yahweh proves true. This happened to us just as he said it would. You got to remember, Yahweh is our father. Just like a father, just like I'm a father. I have children. When I tell them I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it, right? So you how much more so the heavenly father, right? Remember, the scripture tells us his word shall not come back to him void. Let me pick up where I left off. They sold girls for wine to drink. So little Israelite girls, they sold them for them moonshine, wine, and liquor. You understand? And that was the change that were put on them. Let's come out of this. Let's go to Job chapter 6, chapter 6, verse 24. Another precept, and it reads, you even sold an orphan into slavery. So if you were an orphan, your father might have been killed, right? For some point in time or some point or, some point or time or point or reason. And or sell a friend. So let's get this straight. That's a dark saying. So it means you would even sell an orphan or sell the orphan's friend. You know, you got to think about this. There were guys that were friends that maybe both lost their father. They sold an orphan and sold his friend. They never saw each other again. You understand? Let's come out of this, man. Let me finish with this last scripture here, brothers. Isaiah chapter 5, verse 13. Therefore, my people will go into exile for their lack of understanding. Right? Because remember, that's part of the curses that we were under, that we are still under. That's why we're scattered about now. This is why 1 Peter chapter 1 starts off to the 12 tribes scattered abroad. When we hear this truth, it's our responsibility to wake up, to come back to our heritages, back into our understanding, to build our faith, to keep the laws to the best of our ability. Right? And we see what the Lord has done to us. Let me start over, brothers. Sorry. Isaiah chapter 5 verse 13. Therefore, my people will go into exile for the lack of understanding. Those of high rank will die of hunger. And the common people will be parched of thirst. They're going to die of thirst. This is why in the new kingdom, this is why it tells us in the kingdom to come, the last shall be first because we are the last now. And the first shall be last. Who's first now, pearly things? You and your nation are first. Right? And she's right. She's right. Okay? In comparison, if we're looking through the, at this spiritually, the worst slavery is the slavery that the Edomites are going to be subjected to. As the scripture states, we shall rule over the other nations with a rod of iron. Let me come out of this. Pearly things, you really made an ass of yourself. And that's the elder Malcolm ass of yourself. Pardon me. I get a little excited. And that's the elder Malcolm always states. Pearly things, shut the F up because you don't know what you're talking about. Hopefully, brothers, this lesson has been edifying. Shalom.